This is from the New York Times. This happened, I, I believe, back in April. Biden administration ends limits of, on use of fetal tissue for research. Uh, here we go again. Hold on to your butts. The Biden administration on Friday lifted restrictions on the use of fetal tissue for medical research, reversing rules imposed in 2019 by President Donald Trump. The new rules disclosed by the National Institutes of Health allow scientists to issue or to use tissue derived from elective abortions to study and develop treatments for diseases including diabetes, cancer, AIDS, and Bum, 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 bum. COVID-19. Yeah, because that's the biggest threat to mankind today. <laughs> Anyways, look, here's the problem here. Joe Biden claims to be a Christian. Joe Biden is a self-proclaimed practicing Catholic. Okay? What, did you miss that in Sunday school, Joe? Did you miss what God says about abortion and life in the womb? Because he's laid it out in scripture, and we'll go through it in a minute. But that, that being said, there will probably not be one episode where we don't go, where we don't dive into the word of God, because that's what this whole show's about. But apparently Joe missed that part in Sunday school where abortion is murder. Where life in the womb is life in God's eyes. Apparently he missed that. But now here we are. We've done reverse Trump's Trump's um Trump's mandate saying that we're no longer gonna use baby parts for medical research. He's done reverse that. Now we've done a complete one eighty and here we are again using dead babies baby parts, uh body parts for medical research. You know what? If that's what it takes to cure cancer, I don't want it. I don't want it. It's sinful, it's blasphemous. And you, Joe Biden, you to, to claim to be a Christian and write laws such as this is beyond ridiculous. If you don't believe in the veracity and the inerrant word of God, I would argue you're not even a Christian. You're fooling yourself. Oh my goodness. Jin Saki was asked about this at a, at, a, at a press conference at the White House. Let's see what she had to say about it. Okay, next question. Uh, as you well know, the administration just lifted the ban on researchers using fetal tissue from elective abortions. And the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, uh, the leaders of the president's uh, own faith, said in reaction, it is deeply offensive, quote, to millions of Americans for our tax dollars to be used for research that collaborates with an industry built on the taking of innocent lives. How does the White House respond to that criticism? Uh, look, I, I think the White House specific, er, uh, respectfully disagrees, uh, and we believe that it's important to invest in science and, uh, and look for opportunities to cure diseases, and uh, I think that's what this is hopeful to do. Go oh, my gosh. You know what, White House, Jen Psaki, White House, I disrespectfully disagree. I disrespectfully disagree. And there's millions of Christians out there who would who would just it, to use our money and our tax dollars to go towards this blasphemy, this rotten satanic sin. It's just it's just unfathomable. And 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 I'm glad I'm not the only way who feels like this. I'm glad that the Catholic Church finally stood up and said, no, 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 no. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute. I don't know about all that, Mr. Uh, Biden. Here we go. President Joe Biden recently attending Mass at St. Joseph on the Brandywine in Delaware. But his support for Planned Parenthood, revoking the Mexico City policy, and flipping on the Hyde Amendment, among other things, contradict church teaching on protecting human life. We are all sons and daughters of God. And come this June, Catholic bishops will decide on whether to develop a document that would demand President Biden and other pro-abortion politicians not receive communion, a public rebuke. Archbishop Joseph Nauman of Kansas City, who chairs the USCCB's Committee on Pro-Life Activities, says such a stance by a public figure is a grave moral evil. 
According to church law, people in persistent sin should not receive communion. There we are. Way to go, Catholic Church. And it's, it's church teaching because it's God's word. Let's, let, let, let's dive in here for a second. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through a f- a few scriptures that I mean should be obvious to most Christians but hey let's face it maybe they're not and maybe this may enlighten you a little bit on the subject maybe you're one of those people who kind of lean kind of lean to the left a little bit on this issue but let's let's see what God thinks about the unborn child let's see how he holds it dear holds it valuable holds it sacred okay let's 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 jump to um psalms 139 verses 13 through 16 where it says uh you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb thank you for making me so wonderfully complex your workmanship is marvelous how well i know it you watched me as i was being formed in utter seclusion as i was woven together in the dark of the womb you saw me before i was born every day of my life was recorded in your book sounds sounds like god values um life in the womb pretty pretty well let's go to um let's let's see here let's go over here let's go over here to job 31 verse 15 where it reads, Did not the one who made me in the womb also make them? Did not the same God form us both in the womb? It's the work of God in the womb. Let's go to... Let's see here. I got, I got, I got, I got some, some bookmarks here for us. Let's see what we got here. Um... Let's go to uh, verse uh, chapter 21, verses 22 through 25 of Exodus. And right here we have a scenario where two guys are fighting, right? And it says, when, a, when men get in a fight and hit a pregnant woman so that her children are born prematurely, but there is no injury, the one who hit her must be fined as the woman's husband demands from him, and he must pay according to judicial assessment. If there is an injury, then you must give life for life, Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, bruise for bruise, wound for wound. Basically, God's saying that Israel was a theocracy. It's a, it's a government run by God. And God's word says, if this happens, you're to give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand. So basically, you kill that baby, you are to be killed by God's law. The punishment is death. Sounds like he takes it pretty seriously, Joe. Um, a couple more. Let's go over here to. <clears throat> let's go over here to Isaiah forty nine one. Forty nine one reads: Coasts and islands, listen to me, distant peoples, pay attention. The Lord called me before I was born. He named me while I was still in my mother's womb. God had called Is- uh, Isaiah for a purpose. To God's own glory before he was even born. And it, we, I mean, we can, we can go back here to um, Isaiah 44. Twice in Isaiah 44. Let's go to 44 2, where it says, Thus says the Lord, who made you and formed you in the womb. Go down a few more verses. Where um, in verse 24, let's see, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and the one who formed you in the womb. Life begins at conception, according to God. And, and if you kill that baby, let's just go back, let's just go back to Exodus 2013, where it says, Thou shall not murder. Joe, did you miss all that? In Sunday school, I hope you're listening now. I hope that the church has got your attention. Oh, goodness. I forgot about this. 
Listen to what, let's check out what, what uh, good old Nancy Pelosi had to say about the um, Catholic Church's stance on denying communion to people uh, with such pro-abortion policies on, on their mind and that they're ready. Let's see here. Um, here we go. Pelosi scoffs at possible denial of communion. This is from the Washington Times. Um, Pelosi scoffs at possible denial of communion over her abortion stance. I can use my own judgment. She says, oh, your own judgment, really. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi scoffed this week when asked about the possibility that a priest would deny her the Holy Communion. The California Democrat, for all intents and purposes, told a reporter that, quote, divisive priests have no authority to deny her the Eucharist due to pro-abortion politics. The U.S. Archbishops and the Bishops' Conference doesn't want you to receive Communion. A reporter said Thursday. Your remarks on that? No, they don't know, Miss Pelosi replied. Catholic News Agency reported. I think I can use my own judgment on that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Your own judgment, huh? Really? And the priests have no right to deny you the Holy Eucharist. Really? Really? Well, I got news for you, Pelosi. The priests are just going by what God laid out in his word. If we go over here, let's see here. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. So then whoever eats the bread of, or drinks the cup of the, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. In this way, let him eat bread, eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep. God's saying in his word, if you're harboring unrepentant sin, that you don't that you don't feel you're doing nothing wrong, and, and, and like you said, well, and I'll use my own judgment, like, he just doesn't get it. He He's not with the times. I'll, my judgment's better than his. No, it's not. No, it's not. And his and in in scripture it says to examine yourself and to not take the bread or the cup in an unworthy manner. If we're harboring unrepentant sin in our hearts that we refuse to repent of, we have no business approaching the Lord's table until we deal with that sin in our own hearts, till we pray to God for the Holy Spirit to convict us and convict us of that sin so that we can repent. And be changed by the Holy Spirit and by God's marvelous works. But you, Miss Pelosi, will not use your own judgment on that. And once again, kudos for the church to the church for standing up on this. Oh, goodness gracious. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. Great the 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 great John MacArthur had a few words to say to about Joe Biden on this issue. This was shortly after his inauguration. Let's see what um Let's see what uh, John MacArthur had to say. Let me say something. You better be careful when you put your hand on God. I thought of that in that inauguration. You can say whatever you want to say, but when you touch the ark, when you place your hand on the throne of God, because God is enthroned in His Word, and you place your hand on the Word of God, and pledge to do the very things that blaspheme His name. You talk about a high-risk action. All Uzzah did was what he thought was showing some respect. God doesn't want your respect. He wants your obedience. Don't tell me that you advocate the slaughter of babies in the womb. Don't tell me you want to destroy masculinity, femininity, marriage. Don't tell me you want to fill the world with LGBTQ people in leadership. You want to justify transgender activity. Let me say something here, those for y'all who may just be... A, it, it, John had just got done talking about Uzza and... <clears throat> Well, what had happened was the Jews, the, the Israelites were transporting the Ark of the Covenant from, don't quote me on this, 
I'd have to go back and look, but I think they were transporting it from Shiloh to Jerusalem, and they were carrying it in a way not prescribed by God. Okay, God had prescribed the Levites to carry the ark on two poles, one at each end of it, and carrying the ark while walking. Well, <clears throat> the Israelites had placed the, the, um, the ark on a mule. Okay, and something happened. I can't remember quite what it was. The, the mule either stumbled or, or, or he, he hit a rock. or the, the, some, But regardless, the, the ark started to slide. The ark of the covenant started to slide off of the mule. started to fall. And poor Uzzah, God bless his heart, was only trying to do what was right. And he reached out to steady the, the ark and to balance it back up on the mule. Well, God killed him for it. Now, let me rewind it just a little bit. Let's get back to John. Don't tell me that some respect. respect talk about a high-risk action. All Uzzah did was what he thought was showing some respect. God doesn't want your respect. He wants your obedience. Don't tell me that you advocate the slaughter of babies in the womb. Don't tell me you want to destroy masculinity, femininity, marriage. Don't tell me you want to fill the world with LGBTQ people in leadership. You want to justify transgender activity. Don't tell me you, you want to invite more Muslims in who represent a religion from hell and then put your hand on the throne of God. You can make any pledge you want. Don't mock God. You can make any pledge you want, but don't mock God. Don't mock God. And that that reminds me, that brings me to, <clears throat> let's go to Matthew chapter 7, where the scariest words in Scripture are, in my opinion, um, <clears throat> Where Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. This is verse 21 of Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not pro did, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? And I'll announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who work iniquity. You lawbreakers. There's going to be many. Jesus said there's going to be many on that day who say to me, Lord, Lord, I'm a Christian. And he'll say, I didn't, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. And he goes on to say, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains fell, the river rose, the winds blew and pounded that house. And yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock, on the word of God. <clears throat> but everyone who hears the words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand and the rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house and it collapsed. And it collapsed with a great clash. That's some of the scariest scripture all uh, verses all throughout scripture in my opinion jesus is saying many <clears throat> will claim to be christians and will not enter his kingdom to joe biden i would ask this if you were arrested for being a christian would there be enough evidence to convict you let that sink in a little bit 